What's up guys, I'm Lexi Lombard and I spent this summer traveling throughout Europe twice with nothing but a personal item and a carry-on suitcase. The tips I learned have been so invaluable and the products that I've used have been so helpful that it felt like a crime not to share this. This is not typically the content that I make. I love to make vlogs, I love to make personal videos, but this is going to be very practical tips if you are a chronic overpacker and how I can help you. Because the first time you take a big trip, it's very difficult to leave all of your creature comforts at home. The more often you travel, the more comfortable you get with it, the more comfortable you will become bringing less and realizing what are actually important things to bring. I'm going to start with products and then I'm going to go to packing tips and then finish off with general preparations to do to make your life easier when you leave and when you get back home. This first item has been invaluable to me. It's an expandable tote, one of the absolute best travel items that I have because it's small enough to be a personal item. However, you may notice this zipper. Are you ready? It is expandable. Incredible. I didn't experience any issues bringing it in either shape to the plane. However, if you are needing to have it small, that's fine. But then if you, while you're traveling and not flying, need a larger bag, this is here for you. And it's all in one. This has been so fantastic. I will make sure to link this down below. The second item is a little random, but oftentimes if you're traveling, you're not sleeping your normal hours, you're not eating at your normal hours, you might be partying a little bit more than you're used to, you might be taking substances that are slightly recreational, and you want to keep your immune system intact best you can to put up with all of the nonsense that you may or may not be putting your body through. Every evening before I went to sleep, I would take echinacea. Echinacea is a supplement. This one is 1300 milligrams per serving, so I would take two capsules. This is great for your immune system. I would pass these around to friends. We would all take them before we went to sleep, and on both of my trips, no one ever got sick. Also, if you're a medication girly like I am, I have pills that I need to take every single day. I have a pill case that I take with me just on a day-to-day -day basis, so when I'm traveling, this is absolutely necessary. And then what I'll do is, if I'm traveling for more than a week, depending on how large your pills are, you might be able to fit two days worth in each day and then give yourself two weeks. And then I will just put the rest of my medication in one container. So that way you eliminate the space because space is crucial if you're just packing with a carry-on. Keep it compact. Another piece of storage that has been valuable to me throughout my travels is having a case as an electronics bag. So I keep my camera, my chargers, my adapters all in here. It's in one place keeps things organized because cords get unorganized so quickly, they are a pain. As I'm sure you guys have seen something like this before, where you can plug this into your computer and then put an SD card. May I inform you about the lightning port SD card adapter? This is genius. You're probably bringing a camera with you, a digital camera that you're not using on a regular basis. And some cameras these days do connect to Wi-Fi and you can use a third-party app to import them and it's super easy no 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 let me show you you plug this into your phone you put the SD card in you go to your photos at the very bottom it says import you select what you want it goes straight into your camera roll it could not be easier and this thing is tiny so it even fits into your little bags your smallest night out bags incredibly handy if you are going abroad you are going to need an adapter I have recently switched from one of the adapters that's just a simple plug-in to an adapter that has regular US outlets, USB ports, and even a USB-C port so I can charge my camera, my phone, my laptop, and various items and even share with a friend if need be. A fantastic, compact, multi-purpose charger. Very handy. I'll be sure to link this one down below. Another random one is this spray. This is a wrinkle releaser. It's a fabric spray that I found in the like travel department in the grocery store. They don't really have them at Target too, most places where they have the travel items. 
you're not always going to have access to an iron or a steamer. This is not a gimmick, it does work. And clothes look so much better when they are steamed and ironed and when your clothes have been sitting in a suitcase folded up, they're going to have creases and not look as fresh. These are the way that you can freshen them up. All right, this is probably one of my more luxury items. I know it's considered maybe not luxury, but to me it's a luxury. Large headphones. These are the Apple AirPod Maxes, but I'm sure most headphones of this size will do the job. You don't realize how noisy planes are. Having these on my head, peace. Even if I'm not playing music, I will have these on the entire plane ride. And then when I take them off, you hear the white noise of the plane and don't realize how irritating or like noisy, sort of painful. I'm a little sensitive to it. I remember there was a baby crying on my flight far back, but when I took off my headphones, I didn't know there was a baby crying until that moment. So this makes the uncomfortable flying experience this much more comfortable it's very very worth it i went back and forth i can take these off now i went back and forth deciding on whether or not these were going to be a good item to purchase no regrets i mean even still there is construction outside and i just laid in my bed reading with these on nothing playing this has been a great travel purchase but also an overall purchase. I use them so much more than I thought I would. I know bags are fun to accessorize with, but really you've got to be thinking of space saving. So first of all, that Longchamp bag is already a tote bag. Like if I need a functional bag, that's fine. But I figured I should bring at least two more bags. So I brought a tote. This is a great day bag. This would be fun if we were shopping. This is also a good beach bag. What else did I use this for? I mostly just used it for shopping in the beach, but very handy for the day and then if I didn't feel like carrying something that big for the day I had this as my night out bag but I often wore it during the day as well this is a good size I think when you are choosing a bag to bring put all of the things that you would want to carry around in the day and make sure they fit if they don't fit I would recommend selecting a different bag because I think a lot of us are like well this one's not as cute as the other one so like let's just bring both no Learn to make a decision. It's gonna change your life. Moving past indecisiveness is one of the biggest forms of growth that we can have as individuals. Make the choice. Okay, next up, packing tips. Flat lay all your items. You think that rolling your items is going to save you room? Flat lay. Flat lay, flat lay, flat lay. When you're putting a shirt in your suitcase, lay the entire shirt down. You're putting in pants, just try to make them fit as far as they can before folding them. Okay, next tip, I love to read more than the next guy, two books max, two books. Unless you have a ton of downtime, you know, you are going on a week-long vacation with your silent family, then sure, bring three, but I think you're fine with one. The only reason I brought two on my recent trip is because I was two-thirds of the way through my current book and I wanted to finish that, but I knew I'd need a second read but I only got halfway through my second read, so I definitely did not need any more than that. For my staples, I bring one of each. I bring one pair of jeans. It's not gonna matter as much if you bring two bikinis or three bikinis, the weight's not gonna be that different, but outerwear is cumbersome, so make the decision. Figure out which is gonna be your jacket for the trip and run with it. Solidify that decision. Jeans I'll wear over and over and over again. I don't need two, I don't need three. Also, if you don't wear jeans, don't bring jeans. I think that's an overarching tip of common sense. Think of what you do in your day-to-day -day life and don't alter that too much for your traveling. Don't think that you're gonna have this whole new personality that comes out when you're traveling. My rule of thumb that I always tell myself is what are the clothes that you would wear on a day-to-day -day basis? Great, bring those staples and then if you wanna go shopping to accessorize and wear something fun that your new Italian lifestyle is bringing out of your personality, fantastic. Next tip, dresses over pant and top. If you're someone that doesn't wear dresses, don't bring dresses. But if you're someone that does like dresses, opt for that because that's a full outfit in one piece versus having to bring two pieces. I brought more tops than I had bottoms. I re-wore bottoms. I had a white flowy skirt, a pair of jeans, a mini skirt. I maybe brought like five bottoms and then like 15 tops. I didn't even end up wearing them all because you end up finding the pieces that you really like and then you re-wear them a bunch. But it is nice to have options. And as I said, if you are packing for a warmer trip, I should have included this in 
the products, but this is fine. This is also a packing tip. In your carry-on, have a zip pouch for your important belongings. Already in my carry-on, I'm gonna have a little zip pouch for skincare, like a little extra lip gloss, a facial spray, the things that are more luxurious things that I just like to bring on the plane with me to make the experience more comfortable. But in a big bag, as I showed you, things get lost very easily. So I kept my boarding pass, tickets, my passport, and a pen in here. And that was really handy. Also, this is a louder pouch, so it's easy to find within a dark bag. I love this. This is also Longchamp. I have a matching tote. They did a collab with toilet paper, which is a magazine. So good. I actually have the tote right here. I want to give a shout out. This is my podcasting bag that I bring to the studio. I love it. I adore it but I didn't bring it with me. As See, that was the thing. I wanted to bring this tote because it's so cute, but I'm like, it doesn't go over your arm. You have to carry it. Are you gonna do that? You're not gonna do that? Okay, then bring this tote. But the tip is really about the pouch. The pouch is handy. Another packing tip is if you have heavy items that are small and lighter items that are big, like let's say you are bringing a big, warm sweater. Okay, that's gonna be large. You only have so much precious space in your suitcase because it's not going to be heavy on your arm put it in your carry-on if you're getting to the point where you need to make decisions and you have to start packing a little bit into your personal item choose light stuff that's larger and put the smaller things that are heavier in your roller bag lastly laptops can be very heavy and hard to travel with during my first europe trip i had traveled and i was really bopping around like we were only staying in places for four or five days at a time so it was a lot of packing, unpacking, and repacking. We were running around from plane to plane, and my arm was so tired because my laptop was so heavy. I had a 16-inch MacBook. As soon as I got home, the first thing I did was trade it in for the 13-inch, and it's so much lighter. I think it's maybe two or three pounds lighter, and this has made traveling so much more comfortable for me. So if you are someone who travels a lot, I would highly recommend opting for the smaller laptop. I customized mine so it has more RAM and more storage, but it's compact. Truly can't say enough good things about it. I love it. It's probably my best purchase that I've made all year was downsizing my laptop. The next section of the video is preparations. When I was making my flight purchases for this last trip, there were a lot of moving parts. I had my flight from LA to London, London to Paris, Paris to Positano, Positano to Naples, Naples to New York, New York to Los Angeles. That's six different tickets and because I wasn't loyal to an airline this time, I was just trying to get the best deals. I had a lot of different tickets from a lot of different airlines. What made it a lot easier is every time I had a confirmation, I would screenshot it or download the ticket and then add it to a folder on my computer called end of summer trip. And I had all of the flights in there, so God forbid anything happened, I wasn't able to check in. I was able to reference my confirmation number, my flight number, and that just gave me peace of mind. The next thing to do a day or two before you leave is to text your bank, hey, I will be out of the country, I will be traveling through Europe from this date to this date. Easy. My credit card was never flagged, I was never without money. Similarly, on the topic of paying for things internationally with your credit card, when it tells you, do you want to pay in the country's currency or in your currency, choose the country's currency. Next thing, figure out your phone plan. I used to have Sprint and I was able to, is Sprint not even in existence anymore? Or is it T-Mobile? One of the, it doesn't matter. I digress. Okay, I used to have a plan where I could go anywhere and never have to let my carrier know. For Verizon, I found out when I was in London in June that I was getting charged and I had to FaceTime my dad to figure out how to get authorized as a user on my account and so just save yourself the hassle because that was like an hour and a half ordeal while we're trying to get ready to go do things in another country. It's not exactly how you want to spend your time. Second time around, this most recent time, I was able to log into Verizon let them know the dates that I was traveling and then I was good to go and it's ten dollars a day or unlimited data, I believe. And then for the flight or for traveling, make sure you download your music. Spotify, I know that I will just download different albums that I'm interested in or podcasts that I wanna to listen to. It's nice to have things that you can access without Wi-Fi. That I normally do just passively. Sometimes I don't even do it till the Uber ride to the airport. So it's not urgent, but definitely very helpful. 
I will make sure to link down below all the different products that I talked about. If you like this video, let me know. Happy to expand on any things. If you have any other questions, you can just leave them in the comments and I'll get to you if you want to know. If I forgot something, I can't think of the questions that you would have, but if you have them, feel free to leave them down below. And then I vlogged this most recent trip, so if you want to see my time in Paris and Italy, I have that. It's called Girls Trip, and then my New York vlog says New York vlog on it. Very easy to find. I also did some shopping while I was gone, and I went to a PR agency and got some fun clothes as well. So I think I will do a haul. So either my next video will be a vlog or a haul. You let me know what you want to see. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. And it's fun to be back on YouTube. This is the first video you've ever seen. I think I said this already, but this is not my normal style of content. I just have learned a lot and wanted to share. But I'm still a fun time. You can check out the vlogs. You might love them. Subscribe. Alright, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!